Hi, I'm Vania Soto, and I would like to invite you to join me to do a painting of the Kaufman Center's building. Um, we're going to do a step-by-step -step painting, a watercolor painting. It's going to be super simple. So you can print out the actual outline of the building, and then from there I'll show you how to trace it onto the watercolor paper, and then I'm going to teach you how to paint step-by-step -step, um, the watercolor painting of the building. Okay. So once you have printed out your piece of paper of the outline of the Kaufman Center, you are ready to get started. What we're gonna do is we are going to turn our copy paper around and we are going to be using either a pencil or a graphite stick. I used a graphite stick just because it's a little bit faster, but if you don't have one, you can also use a pencil, okay? And all you have to do is just cover the entire image. This is the back of the image. Cover the entire image. Everybody can see where the lines are for where the building is. That is what you want to cover with graphite or pencil, pencil marks. Once your paper kind of looks similar to mine, that it's completely covered like this, completely covers the, um, the back of the piece of paper where you can still see the outline for the other side. Then you are ready to go. You're gonna turn this over and we are gonna tape this down to your watercolor paper. That is the next step. So we're ready to tape down. I just usually use this kind of regular scotch tape. You want four pieces, okay? But kind of put it through your hand so it's not so, so sticky. Okay, the reason is because when you lift it up, you don't want to um, take any of the edges off of your paper or off of your um, watercolor paper, okay? So you kind of want it loose, but you want it to still tape that down, right? So you're gonna do that to all four sizes, okay? Need one more. All four sizes here are taped down, okay? Next, what we're going to do is we're gonna grab our pencil, okay? And we're gonna start on the left-hand side, work our left-hand side all the way to your right, okay? So we're gonna start with this. You are going to go over every single line that you see. Now, the reason why I'm starting left to right is so I can remember everything that I've already drawn up because it's kind of hard to see where your pencil line is at over your lines that are printed out, okay? So what I'm gonna do is do all of the um, rainbow-shaped lines, starting from the left, okay? We're gonna take our time. We're gonna put down our pencil. Um, not so hard, but pretty hard to make sure that all of our lines are covered, okay? So if this is your first time doing this trick, I'm gonna show you why we put our graphite underneath. This is a cool secret. And you can actually do this with any image that you would like to transfer over onto your paper. Let me show you why because the paper have has graphite on it, you can now see it through the paper. Do you see that? So that is how you're gonna transfer this image over. And we want it to be pretty perfect. We want the building to be turn out pretty perfect um, drawing wise, okay? Because that's kind of not important right now. What we want to learn is how to paint it, right? So that's kind of why we're using this trick. Okay, so do you see how you kind of have to go over it a little bit harder just because if we didn't cover all of the lines, you could miss some spots, okay? So if you're not happy with your paper, if it's not fully covered in graphite or with pencil and you're missing some, you can just go back to that actual area and um, add some more graphite or pencil to that area. Do not uncover the whole thing because it's gonna be really hard to put it back into place. Okay, all right, so we're gonna continue on and we're gonna continue on drawing the rainbow-shaped lines on the Kaufman 
building, okay? All right, we're gonna take our time, but remember we are gonna put our pencil down pretty good just so we can see, okay? When I am all done with the arc lines of the Kaufman Center, I am going to be using a ruler to draw that very straight line that is right here in the, this building, okay? You kind of want that to be straight. So um, I'm going to grab a ruler right after this and I'm going to get started on drawing that last straight line. Okay, I hope you guys are enjoying this. This is going to be so much fun. Watercolors are one of my favorite for sure. Oh, little straight line there. Make sure you follow exactly the line and how it goes. Try not to get out of the line because then you won't know for sure. Okay, so we're drawing on the lines making our way all the way back to the right hand side of the building okay don't forget that little line there all right so for the very last part of the building we're going to grab a ruler and we are going to be drawing that line i told you about we wanted to be pretty straight. So we're gonna go ahead and follow on this line here. And then there's kind of like a little loop. Do you guys see that? That's not completely straight. You can freehand that right there. All right. So now that we're all done with our copy, we can go ahead and see kind of what it looks like underneath. Do you see how you can see your image? Now it's very light and that's okay. We don't want it to be too, too dark because then you'll see the watercolor marks underneath. We just want to kind of make an impression of where our lines are going to be, okay? So we can go ahead and just go ahead and take the whole thing off so we can get started. Okay, so we are ready to get started on the painting part. So of course you'll need your watercolor set, which is, this is the one I use. Okay, you need um, some water. I have this little tiny bottle of water that I use. Um, of course, we'll have our image. This is the actual image that we're going to be using to paint the Kaufman Center. Okay, this is gonna be our reference picture. And of course, you'll see the reference picture posted up above, of course, so you can follow along with the image, okay? Now that we kind of have that established and what it's going to look like and we're going to be ready, have the image on hand, we can go ahead and get started with the painting, okay? So I usually have this little, um, the top to this, this little tray to, um, to use as a mixing, a, a mixing palette, okay? So that's kind of important and I almost always use two brushes. I always use uh, angle brushes. Okay, that's just my preference. You don't have to have an angle brushes, but for me, I prefer for both watercolor and acrylic. So I have a big one and a smaller one, okay? This is for more finer details. This is kind of for more like the background picture, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and get started with the background picture first. Okay, so let's get started with the background. Of course, you see the background. Um, looks a little more like a turquoise blue so i'm gonna uh, i wetted my brush first and now that it is wet i can pick up the actual watercolor paint okay so we're gonna do kind of like the darker side of the background first which is going to be more up here and then on the sides it's going to be just a little bit lighter which means it's just we're going to add more water to it that's that's basically what that means Okay, so with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to paint across from the line first. Do you see how much darker that is? Pretty dark, right? 
You can use any kind of watercolors, of course, with this painting as well, okay? Any watercolor paint will do. So we're gonna grab some water and we're gonna kind of spread that out, okay? Make sure we don't have any hard lines because it is watercolor. Um, and we want the sky to look a little bit more natural, like a watercolor sky, okay? To see how around the around the lines it's darker, but it's kind of going to be lighter everywhere else. That's kind of the trick here. So remember, no hard lines anywhere where you can see what they're. It's already making hard lines for itself. Mm -hmm. Kind of use some water to um, undo that kind of image. Okay, that kind of a line. Just with water. That's all you have to use. Okay. So if it's drying anywhere, go ahead and just put water in it and put your brush across it and that, that way it won't dry with any hard lines. Okay, bring that all the way down. Okay, this should be fun. This should be fun. Okay, let's see. Let's add more water to the image and kind of spread out the color all the way to the end. Let's do the same thing on the other side so it doesn't dry out like that. Okay. Just drag the color that you used when you first put the color down. I haven't really gone back to my palette and grabbed any more paint. Because we want it to be pretty vibrant, you know, pretty light, especially here on the side. So you don't need to go back into your palette and grab some more paint for that. Okay, so you can go ahead and keep going as far out as you want on your paper. Okay, so this is the sky. So if it happens to build up in places, it's okay because they can be like clouds. Okay. This is kind of the fun part of watercolor. It could really be anything you want it to be. But remember, no hard edges. Try to make sure you go over any areas where you see any lines building up with color you don't want to you don't want that okay if you do want to add more color you're more than welcome to which i'm just going to add in case somebody else does want to add a little bit more color around the building just remember to make sure that you add a lot of water so it kind of matches the background you've already created for yourself in case you were to go back to add more paints, okay? Which I know a lot of people are going to, so I said I might as well, just so they can see what it will look like, okay? So remember, you want to match the background you've already created for yourself, right? You don't want two backgrounds that'll look like a rainbow. So go back and undo any lines that um, have been created from adding more color to your paper. Okay, so once you are happy with your background color, now we can get started to um, do a little bit more of a detail-oriented spots, okay? So I'm gonna grab my other brush, which is the smaller brush I told you guys about that I use for detail. I'm gonna go ahead and dip it into the water. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be grabbing blue, and I am going to be putting that in my little pan, my mixing pan, and also grabbing black, okay? So that's gonna kinda make more of a darker blue color, which is good. So now we have that. I think it might be a little bit too dark, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab some more blue. Okay, put it into my 
mixing palette here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the beginning of the anchor. I mean, the little art part on the left-hand side of the building right here. Do you see how there's three colors? There's a darker blue, lighter blue, and all of a sudden you can see the reflection of the, of the ground, which is darker, which is a different color. This is just the sky. The reason why we're doing the dark color and then the lighter blue is because it bows since the building is going around kind of like a ball it reflects starting from above is darker because it's farther away from us and the closer it is to us is where the lighter side is so that's what makes the image kind of go around okay so we're going to go ahead and get started on the left hand side of the building here and we are going to do our first line kind of dictating the side of the building, okay? After that, we're gonna continue on to the other line that makes kind of that arch, the first arch, okay? So we want to paint on the first kind of dark line, okay? After that, we are going to just add water which will make it lighter. You see that? All it is is just adding water. I didn't go back with my palette. Okay. And then if you do have a lot more excess paint, use your napkin and kind of dab it onto your napkin. Grab some more water. And it's going to make it even lighter. You see that? If you feel like you have too much excess water, go ahead and just dab your brush into the napkin. And that will be it that will make it lighter, okay? It just makes the color not so concentrate, not so concentrated, okay? So here is our first arch. Now it has the dark side, the lighter side, and remember, we said now it's the reflection of the ground, right? Which is basically um, kind of just an all black color, which is what I'm going to be using here, okay? First, I'm gonna do the line to help that arch continue to look like that same piece of arch. It's gonna, I'm gonna do the dark side of the ground first, and then after that, I'm gonna make it a little bit lighter so it can mix in with that blue that we just put in, the lighter blue, okay? So if you mix it together, you kind of wanna blend it in so then that way it kind of looks a little bit more seamless. Okay. All right. If you feel like your light or your darker part of the arc isn't as dark as you want it, go ahead and grab some more black. Just do the bottom part here. And then to blend it out, just go ahead and put your your napkin or your brush into your napkin. Do the same thing we did the first time. Okay, so now we have our dark blue, our light blue, and our reflection of the ground. That is what we're going to be doing throughout the side. This one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yep, one, two, three, four. All the way to here is what we are going to be doing. We're going to be creating it dark blue, light blue, and then black. Okay? Okay, we're going to continue on by going to the next pillar here. And what we're going to do is the same thing. Okay, since we already have the line on the left-hand side, we're going to do the line on the right-hand side of the curve. Okay. You want it to be a little, little bit darker than the first one. Not too much. That looks a little bit more black than blue. Let's fix that. Okay. You just want to make sure that you can tell the difference that it is a, the next pillar and not the continuation of the same one. Okay, 
Now, the cool trick here is that where the light edge, where the light part of the pillar is, we need to change position on here. So that way, some the background, um, I'm sorry, the ground reflection will be in different sides. Okay, because remember, all of the pillars have different sides. Some are bigger, some are smaller. So do you see on each edge how the dark starts in different places? We're gonna try to continue that on, okay? So now we are done with all the first four pillars of the blue. Now the orange color starts, which is the actual color of the side of the building that doesn't have a reflective um, material to it, okay? So let's get started with that. I have mixed my yellow with an, a mustard yellow that I have here, which is going to be the actual color of the side of the building. That we're going to be painting okay once you have your color ready we can go ahead and get started with the first um, pillar that you can see the side of the building here okay so the reason why this is this color is because this is the actual color of the building okay my my color is probably a little bit more yellow than the actual color of the building but we're gonna go with whatever the picture is showing us Okay, so this is not a reflected side of the building. This is the actual color of the stone that it has on each side of the pillars, okay? So once we kind of have that skinny part all painted in, we are going to be working on the reflective side on the right-hand side of this pillar we just painted, okay? It's going to be a little bit darker, which means I'm going to add just a little bit of red to the same color I just created, okay? The same color, so it'll be a little bit more orangey color, okay? The reason why is because we want to make it a little bit darker. This is going to be the edge of the reflected pillar that's right next to that actual wall. Let's put a line down first. Just make sure we have a good division between that yellow and then in this reflective part of it, okay? Now that we have our line down, we can go ahead and add a little bit more of that mustard color. Okay, once we have that, let's go ahead and try to blend it in a little bit with that darker orange. Okay, see, now it's less visible. Okay, let's start from the bottom here and work our way up and let's meet where we ended here. Now, I'm, if you look at the picture, I am not covering the entire pillar. I am covering just the side of it, just because that's the reflected side of this actual yellow part, okay? The rest is going to be blue, just how we did over here which is a darker blue, a lighter blue, and then the reflection of the ground. We are going to be continuing that all throughout the picture. Okay. Okay, so now that we're done with that, blue side let's do another yellow remember the side of the building is li lighter for sure so we want to use a good yellow this is the actual side of the building now try to not mix it into the blue so it doesn't turn green on you try to make sure you also wash your brush pretty well um, to make sure that it stays that bright color. OK, 
Okay. So, remember it's that light yellow and then the dark orange that's going to be next. That's going to be, that's going to go right next to this yellow right here. Okay. So all we're doing, of course, is just we're adding that red color onto this yellow again. Just redoing the same thing we just did. Okay. Going to make our line. Create that division between the light yellow and the reflection of the actual color. Okay. Okay, then we're going to repeat what we just did on the other side again by adding more of a darker orange now. Add that darker orange here. Remember, this is a reflection. Okay. Okay, and then after this, of course, you just put on your dark blue all the way down to here, your light blue, and then the reflection of the ground. We are going to be continuing on doing the same thing into our pillars over here, okay? Okay, for these next arcs, they're a little bit thicker. So we're gonna do the exact same thing, it's just we're gonna cover a little bit more of the pillar this time. It's gonna be more of a reflection of the um, actual building than the reflection in the sky. But do you see how at the bottom, it kinda, kinda splits down the middle? Splits kinda down the middle from where the reflection of the side of the building and the reflection of the actual sky and the ground. So we're gonna make sure we make that division pretty well, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and get started with our dark blue, just how we've been doing. Let's make our distinction line first, okay? After that, go ahead and start painting like normal, like you've been doing all the other pillars, which is the dark blue, light blue, and then the reflection of the ground. Okay, so now that we are all done with our pillars, let's paint this little last part of the side of our building, the same yellow we've been using over here. Let's go ahead and just cover that entire spot right here. Do not use any of the dark oranges um, on this part, just the yellow. Just the side of the building here. Okay. All right, so we are all done for our pillars this way. We still have to paint in our pillars on the other side. Okay, so these two first pillars are going to be darker than the last ones. The reason why is because um, the reflection and the shadow of the pillars up here 
are reflecting the side of the building. So we are going to be doing a, a darker color for those two, okay? Let's go ahead and get started with that. Now, I use this kind of a darker yellow that I was using earlier for the pillars, okay? I put that in my mixing tray and then I add a little bit of black. So now it's got, it kind of has that brown dark color to it, right? With that, I'm going to go through the lines the, of the first two pillars we just spoke about that have that shadow effect, okay? Now that we have that kind of outline, we can fill it in. So it is that same color we just mixed, except I'm going to add a little bit more yellow to it. I think it's a little bit too bright still, so I'm going to grab a little bit of black. Do you see how it turns kind of that brown, greenish color? That's the, that's the color we're going for, okay? Now we can go ahead and paint in those that side of the pillars here. You don't want it to be too dark, so make sure you grab your, your brush has enough water on it. Okay, don't paint with a dry brush, please, for watercolor. Okay, now, now that we have that first one, remember we went over with lines, so that already made a division for us. So it's not going to mix, okay? I'm going to go ahead and paint that inner shadowy pillar. Okay, all right, so we got the first two in. We've got two more to go, which are lighter colors. So what we're gonna do is just grab the regular yellow that we've been using, okay? Let's go ahead and paint this next one. Let's do a line to make sure we divide our pillars out. Do you see how to, that's a lighter color? That's what we're going for, okay? This is kind of, these last two are out of the shadow of these other pillars over here. So let's get that last one and let's make that last one really light. So that means more water, okay? Let's make our line and let's go ahead and just fill it in with that yellow. Okay, that was our last pillar, guys. So what I want to do down here, since it's it's pretty empty, what I want to do is I want to create that kind of grass that you guys see uh, underneath it. So what I'm going to do is just grab my green that I have going on here. Oh, you know what? I'm going to switch brushes, grab my bigger brush, the one that we did the sky with. And that's with this one, I'll grab the green. Put it into my mixing palette, and then I'm gonna grab the black to make kind of a darker green that you guys see there. Okay. Uh, this is optional. I'm gonna say this is optional, and then um, you guys can add um, the concrete that you know it has, or whatever you want to add. Okay. So. I'm going to do some grass and I'm going to start from the left hand side and work my way up to the right hand side. I'm going to make just a little kind of like grassy areas. Like I said, this is optional, but I think it looks pretty cool because it's pretty true to the picture that, the reference picture that we are using. Grab more green for my grass here. So if I'm not mistaken, I think this grass is actual um, native grass to Missouri, but I could be wrong. We are going to say that in our picture, it actually is. Okay. Let's 
Doesn't it look like it has kind of something? No, a little bit more solid picture. Oh, that turned out a little bit darker than I wanted. It's okay. You can go back and make the rest darker. So, to be true to the picture, the grass underneath is a little bit darker than above it. So, I'm just going to grab black. And kind of pull that color up. Color here. Oh. Spread it out. Just like all watercolors kind of have an ending, right? And I have a watercolor edge to it. That watercolor edge. I think that looks pretty cool. All right, okay, so I'm all done. That was the last kind of piece to our beautiful Kansas City, Missouri Kaufman Center building. So I hope you guys had so much fun. I had so much fun with you guys explaining on this little step-by-step -step tutorial. Hope to see you guys soon. Thank you for watching and following along.